Hi, in this video we are going to be talking about the dine and wine pattern. In particular, we're going to be talking about the placemats for the dine and wine pattern. This pattern includes instructions for placemats as well as a wine caddy and a small bread basket. The wine caddy can be made with or without handles, but they're all constructed similarly. So I'm going to be talking about the placemats first. Now these placemats are reversible. These happen to be Christmas on both sides, uh, but they're two different color combinations. So one side is green and red, and the other side is uh, white, green, and red. The key to these placemats is you need to have a binding fabric that works with both sides. So I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to show you another version of the placemat. In this one, we're, uh, we have a Christmas fabric on one side and on the reverse we have more of a fall combination so you could use this for Thanksgiving and use this for Christmas. Now notice I, how I have a green binding on both sides. It works well with both fabrics. Now be creative. You could make your um, uh, placemats be 4th of July on one side, Valentine's Day on the other, you, using a red binding. Uh, be creative with what you do. But these are reversible. So um, the next thing I'm going to talk about are the pieces. Now, I like to lay my pieces out because we're using different strips and we're using two and a half inch strips for this. Um, you can use a different strip for every strip in the binding or you can have more of a coordinated color. In this one, I'm using just two fabrics for the back two fabrics for the front, and a, a one fabric for the binding and the optional sashing. We're also using, I like to lay the um, fabrics out in the order that I'm using them because it just helps me to know where I am in my sewing. We are also using Interform Plus by Bosel. It's a foam base batting that's fusible on both sides and you will need to have a double-sided fusible for this. Then the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be working with these center two strips. So we're going to be working from the center and out in both directions. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to take your um, inner form strip and your center front piece. Center the inner form strip. Now the inner form strip is cut two inches wide on that center piece. Flip it over and when you do you want to make sure that you are using a Teflon sheet underneath and on top of your ironing pad so that this does not fuse to your ironing pad. So iron that on, flip it over, take your backing center uh, strip and iron it onto the back. Now for the purposes of this video I am doing a very short piece. When you're doing your four placemats this piece is going to be much longer, so I just wanted to let you know. This is just enough for one piece. If you want to do just one or two, two placemats at a time, if you're doing one, take your information in your pattern, divide it by four. If you're going to do two, take your information in the pattern and divide it by two. So um, you've finished this strip and it's going to look like this, where you've got both strips are attached to your interfacing. The next step is you're going to be working with the two strips, and I'm going to move back over to my layout, 
on either side of the center panel. So these two strips and these two strips. So here, what you're going to do is you're going to lay the right hand strips, one on top and one on the bottom, raw edges matching, and sew them both on at the same time with a quarter of an inch seam. I've already done that on this side. Then you're going to take your double-sided fusible interfacing, lay it underneath your top strip, and iron it. Flip it over, pull the bottom strip out, and iron that so that it looks like this. I'm going to be talking about the stitching in a minute. So if you need to review this part of the video, but basically you're placing your strips one on top, one on bottom, sewing on with a quarter of an inch seam, placing your interfacing underneath, ironing it, flip it to the back, fold your bottom strip out, and iron that. Again, you want to use your Teflon sheet as you're doing that. You're going to stitch and flip, adding two strips here and two strips there on, on both sides as you go. Once you have all of your strips on, your piece is going to look like this. And again, it's going to be, I'm going to slide this down a little bit. It's going to be much longer. You will cut your pieces, oh, sorry, step back one. Before you cut your pieces, you want to stitch on either side of your seam to give it some detail and also to add to its structure. You want to stitch a half an inch on either side of this seam. So I've stitched here and here, here and here, here and here, 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 and so forth. You want to use a walking foot when you do this stitching. So once you've done that, then you're going to cut these pieces to 10 inches uh, wide or 10 inches tall. This is the um, way your placemat will look on your table. The next step is optional. This is to add these sashing strips. Now notice on this placemat right here, I have different colored sashing strips on the front and the back. With the, with the um, combination that we're working with right here, I've used the same green sashing strip on both the front and the back that I'm using in the binding. And that makes it easier to cut. So to add your sashing strips, again, we're putting a sashing strip. And this is, has a folded edge. So make your sashing strips according to the directions. Place one, just like you did with your strips, place one on the front and one on the back. Stitch them on at the same time with an eighth of an inch seam. That seam will be hidden in the next step. Do opposing sides. So you'll stitch your sashing to one side and then the other side. Again, you're going to stitch them both on front and back at the same time. If you forget and you only stitch one on the front, put, the, put another one on the back and stitch that on. You No need to take it out because the seam will be hidden. So to do that, I need this pin right here. To do that, you place one on the top, one on the bottom, raw edges matching, and just stitch all the way down with an eighth of an inch seam. 
Okay, now that part is optional. You don't have to put that sashing in, but I think it adds a lot to the, to the placemat. The next step is you're going to be finishing it with your border. So your border are, is also two and a half inch strips. So you'll take your front border and you'll add your borders to the top and the bottom first and then the sides. You're adding your borders the same way that you sewed your strips together in the center. So add one on top, one on the bottom, and your sashing strips will have been sewn on. So sew that on with a quarter of an inch seam, flip it out, slide your interfacing underneath, iron it down, flip it to the back, I, uh, fold out your bottom border, iron that to the interfacing, and then your border will be added to the top. Do the same thing on the opposing edge, and then do your two sides. Once you're done with that, I'm going to just reach over and grab this placemat right here. Once you're done with that, you want to square up your placemat. It is important that your border be the same width all the way around. If you need to square it up, it may be two and a quarter inches. That's what it should be. But if it's two and an eighth inches or even two inches, as long as it's measured from this seam to your outside edge, make sure that you square it up to those two, two inches or two and an eighth inches or whatever all the way around to make it look even. Bind it just like you would a quilt mitering your corners. Flip your binding to the back and stitch it down. And you're all done.